And we're live. Welcome to paraglidingtalk.com. So glad that you're here. Uh, we have a very special show tonight. This is actually a first show. We've never had ever a balloonist on our show. I don't know if that's even right, but uh, Janine is a captain of balloons. Uh, she takes uh uh, you, she could take people up. She's got uh, certifications, all those things that are required to be able to take somebody up in a balloon. She's got a, a giant, uh, I don't know if you call it a tandem passenger balloon, whatever you want to say. Uh, we're going to dig into all of that stuff tonight. We're going we're gonna to talk all about ballooning. And uh, I'm so stoked. She's a local here in San Diego, which makes it special for me. Um, I guarantee I've seen her balloon in the air when I'm flying around at Blossom or at Little Black or wherever we're flying paragliders, free flying or paramotors. And so I've always been super fascinated uh, with the idea of being able to fly in a, a balloon where you you put your uh put a lot of your trust into weather and forecasting and so i'm super stoked to have you on the show thank you so much uh, for for coming on the show uh this is episode 220. now before we start into the questions and all the things that we're going to do tonight uh, i have to mention a couple sponsors uh this show is sponsored by a few people one of those is ppg smoke ppg smoke is a um They've created all kinds of things for our paramotoring community and uh, including safety stuff, uh, power floats that uh, if you hit in water, they'll explode and, and keep you alive. Um, also strobe lights for flying in the evenings and um, or, or, or early morning before the sun comes up. And then uh, they, they have a, the Unity headset uh, and a couple other small things that are pretty cool, including the chase cam. So go check out their website if you want to buy some of that stuff for your paramotoring stuff. Uh, the website is ppgsmoke.com. Also, this show is brought to you by paramotorprops.com. If you accidentally blow up a paramotor prop like Gringo, <coughs> Gringo, uh, you can uh, you can get a new one, new set, and be very happy uh, with that. So uh, that will be um, paramotorprops.com. Their sponsor of the show. Really appreciate their sponsorship. Also, want to mention a local sponsor. If you have plumbing issues, you can reach out to American Allied Drains and Plumbing. Uh, they said if you mention Paragliding Talk, you'll get 10% discount on their services. So uh, sign up with them. You can reach them at 844-777-9055. Janine, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for making the time. I hope it wasn't flyable tonight. Um, we don't fly in the evening. They do in Del Mar, but we do. I normally fly only in the morning. Okay, so, perfect. Yes. Good. So I didn't step on any flying opportunities. That's good. No, you did not. And if you did, I'd unfortunately not be here. <laughs> yeah. Or you'd be <laughs> Whether in the Whether the weather's good, door. we're out there. Yeah. Yep. Well, awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I have all kinds of questions. I'm super fascinated with all things flying. If you don't know much about the show, I don't expect you to know anything about the show. Uh, but uh, this show is dedicated literally to... Uh, flying junkies that need air air time. So we talk about free flying, paragliders, uh, hang gliders. We've had um, guys who fly general aviation um, all the way to, uh, we have guys that follow the show that are watching live right now uh, that uh, are involved in um, flying commercial airliners. Uh, there's all kinds, but uh, mainly uh, the, the reason why I wanted to have you on the show is, is personal to me because I just love balloons. And um, mm. I've I have been in a balloon one time. It was tethered, and it was um, at mm. it was down the street from my house, and it was just kids. We got to get in. They uh, got us off the ground about ten feet, and they'd bring us back down, and we got to you know pull the the deal. And so I'm I'm going to ask you a bunch of baby questions about the sport, and um, <laughs> it is an air sport, so uh, stay with me. But somewhere during probably around the halfway mark of the show we're going to open up for questions and comments from the chat. So uh, if you have questions, you guys are watching online. I really appreciate you coming and joining the show. Um, so uh, welcome and so glad that you're here. So the first thing I want to ask, uh, where are you from originally? I, I can hear your accent. Everybody has an accent, but yeah. yes, um, I get that <laughs> every day here in America. I'm originally from South Africa, okay. but I live in East Africa in Kenya. Okay. And they fly the hot air balloons over the migration and all the animals over there. 
So oh, I came cool. out here to build my hours. Oh, okay. So are you you're planning on going back? I am planning on going back, but I fell in love with California. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit between both worlds right now. Yeah, I bet. Yes, it's going to be hard to leave San Diego for sure. It's a <laughs> magical place for sure. It so is. I want to ask, um, let's start from the beginning. How did you get into this crazy air sport of flying hot air balloons? Well, I was actually never interested in flying. Uh, none of my family is in aviation. I'm the first person that is in my family that's, that's been interested in getting high naturally. Um, so... I started my career off as a game ranger and I looked, I did um, uh, safari drives and uh, walking safaris and showed people lions and elephants. And that took me to Kenya and I saw these balloons every day and they used to fly over my camp every single day. And I used to say to myself, I want to do that, but I never had the money. So I saved up and saved up. And finally I left South that while I left Africa for the first time, and I came to the United States to Albuquerque, which is one of the ballooning capsules of the world. And I learned how to fly a hot air balloon. And apparently I was good at it. So here I am now. Now, talk a little bit about your, you find a balloon. I mean, you don't just go to um, the internet and start searching around, you know, Facebook <laughs> no. marketplace. I want to buy a balloon. Uh, where did you start looking? How did you come across this? Uh, and, and talk about training. How does that happen? Well, I was lucky because I already knew a lot of pilots um, in the Masai Mara where I had my safari lodge. And they always told me, look, you need to go to Albuquerque or the UK to get your license. So I was like, well, where do I go? And most of my friends went to the US, came to the US to get their license. So I landed up coming here and followed their route and um, found a good school. It's the Balloon Flight School in Albuquerque. And um, they took a chance on me. And Al Lowenstein, which I think is about 74 years old, I just call him a crash test dummy because that's all an instructor is, is a crash test dummy in a balloon. And, yes, um, we had a lot of... Um, Crash landings is all fun. You know, that's how you learn in a balloon. It's, it's not a crash landing. It's more like a hard hit, uh, whether it's a cactus or a road or something. But that's how you learn. And he was willing to take me under his wing and brave enough to teach me how to fly. Yes. So after you go through some training, uh, there comes a place where you have enough hours to do what you need to do to take it to the next level. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the um, transition and and at what point did did you buy a, a used balloon from the school or do you buy brand new and 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 start trying to um, bring people with you? How, how does it? It seems like you need to have a, a little a pocket full of people to be able to launch a <laughs> balloon. Uh, Yes, that, that, that is the, the only fortunate and unfortunate thing about a hot air balloon is you need people to get you off the ground. And it, me being a new pilot, it was very difficult to find crew to help me build hours to fly. So it's very easy to get your license, but then it's about building the hours. So I came three months, got my private pilot's license, got my commercial. The school provides you with a balloon because nobody has their own balloon. So you fly in their balloon, you use their balloon. And I was very, very lucky that a friend of mine, when I came back to the US, gave me a balloon. She, Debbie Young, which was one of my instructors, she said, hey, here's my balloon. Take it for a ride a few times. I'm like, really? That's like giving somebody the keys to a Rolls Royce or something like that. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you, you don't just give somebody a balloon to fly. And she obviously had a lot of faith in me. And she said, as long as you got crew, go fly. And I did. I managed to get crew and go fly. I used her balloon every day I was out there, weather permitting, fly, 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 just building hours. 
and you fly in the small balloons. And to be able to get a job, you need to build hours because they're not going to hire you if you don't have enough hours because you've got passengers' lives in your hands. It's not only your life now. Yeah. So I went from a 105 balloon, which is a three-passenger, three to four-passenger balloon, to a 16-passenger balloon is what I'm flying right now. That's what I saw in your pictures. That's so yes. wild. So when you said a hundred, that's a hundred thousand cubic um, cubic balloon. Foot. Yes, okay. foot balloon. Wow. Yes. So now I'm flying a three hundred thousand cubic foot balloon, and I was very very grateful because the company that hired me, um, I'm not trying to be sexist, but it was a female. I tried and tried and tried. And nobody gave me a break in life, but a female did. And Megan Franks of Uncorked Tours, you know, gave, you know, was willing to give me that chance. And I, and threw me in a balloon and she was with me every day, telling me, screaming in my ear, you, that's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. Good job. Bad job. Bad girl. Bad girl. And I finally got it. And here I am today, um, only being a pilot since 2018. And I am now flying the big ones. And I'm wow. very grateful to the women that have had faith in me to get me to where I am today. That is so cool. Uh, talk a little bit about your um, the process of setting up. I, I learned some stuff. Actually, one of the guys that watches the show shared a video that I, I thought was perfect timing. I, I assume that it had something to do with this show. Um, he There was a guy who flies paramotors and his dad flies balloons and oh. uh, so they were he made a video um flying a paramotor and a balloon together and he talked about the do's and don'ts a lot of times what happens with paramotoring is we see something in the air and like we see a, somebody in a balloon we're like yeah cool someone else is flying and we want to go fly around with them which this guy posted a video saying the do's and don'ts and it's also another reason why I wanted to have you on the show, just to kind of get your feedback from uh, some of the things that you warnings that you would put out. And, you know, I know that it's um, obviously it's dangerous. We don't want to be flying too close. And, and I've seen some pretty crazy videos out there. All of that stuff is choreographed. Um, you wouldn't want to just come flying up into, uh, you know, a, a, especially a, a 16 passenger 300,000 cubic foot <laughs> balloon and uh it probably wouldn't be good I, I can imagine there'd be a wake involved there'd be if you flew over the top of it there might be a, a chance that you're you release your uh your hot air and all of a sudden you're flying above that you get blasted out of the air on a paraglide uh talk uh sorry i'm getting a little excited talk a little uh -huh. bit about the initial setup um i learned about the tagline or i'm sorry not tagline king king rope or king the main line that comes candy, off the top? Candy what line. Candy line. Is that what we they call it? We have a candy that? line. We have a red line. We have the crown line. We have crown. many lines. That's it. The crown line. Yes. That's the one off the top. So, Basically, okay, so what, what, what happens in the morning, okay, is you wake up in the morning and you check weather, 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 weather. And yeah. then you go out. And then what we do is we set off a helium balloon. And we watch this helium balloon take off. We call it a pie ball, uh, which is a pilot's balloon. So basically uh, what that pie ball is going to do is what we are going to do. So, and then we, we basically judge our launch sites off of that pie ball. But the pie ball is always wrong, sort of. The weatherman is always wrong. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's all about... Um, being on the ground, you should never make make a choice not to fly in bed because once you're on the ground, things are completely different. So then we head out to the launch field and um, we set up. We make sure that the wind is which, whichever wind uh, direction, whichever the wind is blowing. We set the envelope, which is the main balloon. We call it an envelope. And we lay the envelope out to the direction which the wind is blowing. Oh, that so makes then sense. We, yes. So what we do, obviously, with these big balloons, we have about three crew people and myself, the pilot. We work with the crew and uh, we offload the basket is what is called the gondola. 
Uh, it's a picnic basket. You got yeah. a picnic basket. You got fire. You know, it's a perfect combination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a wicker basket, and what we do is we offload the basket either from a trailer or a vehicle, and uh, we tip that basket over. So you need about four people just to tip that basket over. The small balloons, I can tip it over by myself. And then we'll connect. We've got all these connections that we connect the envelope to the gondola itself. And um, we, we start the fan, let off a little bit of uh, cold inflation. We let off the cold air that blows up the balloon a little bit. Um, and then it's all about check, 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 checklists. And then slowly, slowly, once that balloon is getting a little bit hard, we start putting a little bit of heat in it. And that's when we start turning on the burners, checking everything, making sure there's no leakages or anything. It's all about safety. Check, check, check. Piloting, as you know, is all about checklists. Um, and you never, ever stop checking. If you do, you're going to, something's going to go wrong. So check, check and double check. And then we slowly but surely put heat in it and it slowly but surely stands up and tips the basket over. And then we are ready. You know, and then we're calling the passengers in. So at that point, up. there's a dangerous part right there where it's about to stand up. If you put too much heat in there and it stands up, what happens if you weren't ready yet? It stands up and now all of a sudden it wants to yank you into the air. There's all communication. Happen? I give communication to my crown guys, which are now holding on to that crown line, as you know, that's holding okay. the envelope steady. Ah, and so I'm... I'm on the other side in the gondola, heating it up, and they pulling that crown line and holding it. So it's like a like a pulley system. Yes. Um, not really a pulley system, but uh, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. And then as I am standing up, they are basically skiing with me ah. and holding onto that line. There's two guys in those balloons, those big balloons, skiing and slowly, surely, steadying me, you know, guiding me to stand her up that's the and big then, one yes, two guys for the big one two guys for the big one one guy for the small ones you always have a crown guy and he's very important your crew yeah. are the most important people because they they are your eyes you know so the, the, the balloon comes up sometimes it wants to roll one way or the other yes the crown guy will control the roll sort of you know you tell him then, the pilot will feel okay she's hard enough pull the ground crown line in connect it and then you just keep on putting heat to keep her hard and as she gets hard you need people to jump in the basket because now you need uh weight to keep her down then you get in all your people your 16 passengers you've already weight and balanced them you know and then you put them in and you're checking your you know your flight tech and all that checking the temperature and slowly, slowly heating her up. Then you do a safety briefing and you, you're up, ready to get high in the sky. What does your safety briefing entail? Safety briefing is all about landing procedures because there's three landings in a balloon. The ferry landing is what I call it, which is a normal thing out here in Southern California. The thud, which is quite a, when I have to drop it like it's hot to get to a landing because it's too windy. Um, and then there's a the drag landing. So what I do is I tell my passengers that they need their, we do have ropes in the gondola and they will face the opposite direction is what I'm flying in. So I explain that to, to them, I will be flying in the direction. We actually have a scoop or a skirt is what we call it because ballooning is just sailing in the wind, basically. And we have this thing, the scoop that we turn, we can uh, control it and we can turn the balloon envelope into a position that we sail in the wind. So I tell them, I will be facing that direction. You'll be facing that direction. Hold on to those ropes in front of you and just slightly bend your knees. Just in case there is a bit of a thud, those knees are bent to take the impact. And if we do have a drag landing, because we're landing at about 10, 12 knots, you know, you're holding on and those people are, are, are like this and they're getting dragged, but they are safe. If they on the other way, they oh. it's dangerous. They could roll yeah. out. You know, people are seeing now the danger. They don't need to know. I need to know what's what's coming. They just need to hold on and enjoy yeah. the ride. Yeah. You know, and it's just a little bit dusty and you drag a little while and then it comes to a stop. You know, you pull the red line and you open 
that crown completely to pull you to a complete stop. And there you are. Voila, you survived. <laughs> so you pull the red line. That's what kind of brings that whole crown and kind of folds it up, right? So that the air can escape. Yes. The now, balloons the balloons that I'm flying, we have a smart vent. They are called ultra magic balloons. I call it the Rolls Royces of balloons. They are incredible. Uh, they owe me money for that saying that yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very honest. They, they're awesome balloons. And um, basically, we have two, two, two lines in the balloon. We, we have the candy line. So that is a, a line that we set the top with. We, we've got Velcro on the top that closes that big hole in the balloon. And then we have the red line. And the red line opens that completely to let out all the hot air. So the candy line helps you just slowly come into a landing. You'll pull it a little bit to let the air out and slowly come down. Um, the red line is if, if it is, you know, your final decision, you pull that red line and it will open up that smart vent and it will let out the heat and you will stop. So you don't bounce, bounce, bounce. So you just yeah, basically yeah. come down and boop, you know, and that's it. You've landed. I can tell you, I can tell you as a writer, you know, a person that's getting a ride in a hot air balloon, when that when that big hole opens in the top, oh, it's so <laughs> freaky. I mean, you I know. Can, like, see the sky right above you and you're like, ah, you know, like you're still in the air and everything's calm and safe, yes. but it really blows your mind. <laughs> we, we, I normally, uh, sorry. No, go ahead. When I, when I do, um, normally when it's the final thing and we've been on the ground for a while, I always tell my passengers, hey, look up. This is what we don't want to see when we're flying. And then I open up because it's oh normally gosh. a beautiful kaleidoscope. And then there's a Batman. I don't know why, but there's a Batman sign with the sun coming in every morning. Batman's on the right and a kaleidoscope in the middle. And that's how we let out all the hot air and the crown line guys pull it out. And the envelope will slowly come and does that lay do, down again. Does that have to do with the crown Velcro? Yes, it's okay. it's yeah. it's a smart vent. So the, the the vent basically the in the morning the first thing you do is you put the Velcro, you tab. Yeah. And then after that, um, once the balloon is standing up, the pilot will actually pull the candy line and detab all of those Velcros. So the Velcro is now disconnected, but the, the, it's still in, in intact. And then that helps you with your landing. And then your final landing is what brings you to, you know, the, those already clear and you use the red line and that brings you to the stop. Wow. I got, I got to say that Super there cool. are a ton of questions coming in more yeah. than, way more than usual yeah yeah oh, <laughs> wow. really, such a really cool, <laughs> easy guys trip. i'm a new pilot yeah. oh that's <laughs> awesome that's awesome you're doing a fantastic job and yeah. and um people are still coming in with some great questions before yeah. wow. i'm sure robert's got a ton of questions already but before he he goes back to it i gotta say um i fly with uh there's a couple guys that fly with us down here and one guy uh, is in Temecula, and that's David Northrup. And yes, he, yes, he, David, he asked, I know him very well. Asked a, he's asked a couple of questions. One of them, real quick, is um, uh, he wants to ask her to confirm that. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, that's not it. Hold on. Uh, remind, uh, remind her about the first time she met Jay and I at the LZ in Temecula. She rolled up hot, and I thought she was out there to, to chew us out. You're, you thought you were coming to yell at him or something for flying somewhere. I was actually coming to see where they took off from because I I, I want to actually learn how to paraglide. And when nice. I saw the, when I saw the guys flying around me, I'm like, I was so excited. And I'm like, I have to find these guys. And I, I found out where they were taking off from. And I drove my car and I sat there waiting for them. But I think they were a bit wary. They didn't want to land. I'm like, you have to run out of this gate or whatever. You have to come down <laughs> yeah. sometimes. So, oh, that's so I funny. waited for them and they like approached me and they like heard the accent and I'm like, oh, okay, she could be cool with us. And I'm like, hey guys, I just want to meet you. You know, I'm Janine, pleased to meet you. It's so cool to meet another, you know, pilot. So th that was really, really cool. And all the time I get to see him out there and he flies around the balloons. We have no communication. It's all about safety. 
you know, I'm doing my thing, you guys are doing your thing. Um, we asked not to come too close just in case, especially above us. I don't mind if you go around us, but obviously you can see if we are going fast, you know, you, you'll be going at the same speed, but you guys have never been an issue. And I've just loved watching you fly around me. And my biggest issue is actually drones because I've heard other oh. planets complain about drones and we do have drones and I just tell the drones, Hey, and they fly off, you know, yeah. they never give us an issue. Um, I just, I know the FAA do, does not like the drones around the balloons. There has been a few issues of the drone being sucked into the balloon. You know, that's, that's, that's an issue. Those blades could cut the material. I don't know. I've never had an incident, but when I do see a drone and I do tell them to go away, they listen to me, but the parrot gliders, there's no issues. We love you. <laughs> nice. Okay, good. That's, that's what I was hoping that the show is, is complete now. I, the rest of it is just smooth sailing from here that was the main concern that we had uh, that's, a, that's a great point because somebody did ask in the question uh, in the chat and there's quite a few of the guys that are in the chat that fly paramotors and they come across balloons in whatever part of town or the world, yeah. or country or the world they're in and they 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 want to respect obviously your airspace you're moving very slow we move yes you know uh can be a little bit fast for some people but they they asked that uh, she disliked paramotors flying around hot air balloons you obviously answered that but there are some people that probably would you know could make the the balloonist uh pilot a little nervous but i think uh if you go in with respect it would that, make somebody nervous uh being a new yeah. pilot the smaller balloons a person on their own i would check for because he could be doing his solo and that could be a little bit no sorry now that i think about it i did my commercial check ride and i think maybe that's why i passed it because my instructor was so concerned no that's giving me a bad name but my instructor was so concerned about the helicopter that was so close to us we could actually see his end number he was flying so close to the balloon Whoa. and that could cause issues you know that's a huge oh, yeah. aircraft you know that's a lot of weight and all of that so you turbulence and that so you think whoa he was not happy about that and then we had people jumping out of the helicopter that well i think the helicopter was filming or they jumped out but we had these um um jumpers skydivers and they were jumping, you know, right past the balloon and I'm trying to fly and, you know, keep level is the biggest thing in the commercial check ride and all of that and training at the same time. And he was watching that and I was watching that and, you know, it was all good, but people that are training and solo pilots could be nervous, but I'm good with it. And most of my friends are too in Temecula area. So that's, uh, we're at the half hour mark. We're going to give something away. I uh, want to mention a couple sponsors real quick. Nebraska PPG. He uh, runs a school in Nebraska. If you're interested in getting some top-notch training for paramotoring, you can oh. sign up with Josh and his team today. There's a link in the description. Will Fly donated $5 to the Super Chat. He said, Resurgence PPG rocks. And you are right, Will Fly. Thanks for that contribution. Really appreciate that. Uh, if you want to support the show on Patreon or PayPal, you can do that. Uh, go to the website, paraglidingtalk.com, and uh, <laughs> sign up today to support the show price of a cup of coffee every month you can uh, learn something or probably save your life or maybe just keep the show going and uh, save somebody else's uh, bacon it smells like bacon in my house right now i'm starving uh, but anyways <laughs> we, uh, we've got uh a couple other sponsors one of those is iFly indiana powered paragliding if you're interested in flying paramotors no better place to get proper training than iflyindiana.com kevin and his team will get your feet off the ground and uh, you know you want to fly uh, Sean, if you're ready, you want to spin the wheel, we're going to give away one of those retractable keychains. It is the last one that I have. Lanyard. Phone lanyard. Phone lanyard, yeah. I bet you bal yeah. a balloonist, a balloon, balloonist, is that what you call it? Yeah. Balloonist, say balloonist captain, yes. Pilot? What do you say? I'll say you balloonist. Say? Yeah. You can call I bet me you... captain if you want to. <laughs> yeah, the captain. <laughs> You've, you could probably but benefit yes, from... Captain. The, the retractable uh phone tether so you don't drop your phone out of the balloon which has happened before not myself but oh. um it has happened before i've seen some videos it's very funny. <laughs> okay so no more names in the list okay Just no saying. more names so uh sean's no gonna names. spin the wheel uh by the way the spin of this wheel 
is brought to you by Calamity Kite Clinic. So, um, Janine, when it's time to start your training for paragliding, you're going to need to know how to ground handle your wing. Sean is going to be a great place to start. Awesome. Cal- Calamity Kite Clinic, they will teach you everything that you need to ground handle your wing, and all of those things translate into a, a better pilot in the air. If you want to join their group, calamitykiteclinic.com. Thank you. Did you already spin it, Sean? Yeah, I, I okay. started spinning. Okay. It's, it's, okay, good. it's getting it's getting there. I, I greased just saw, it really good today. Yeah, I see my name is down there on the bottom. I I need you to spin it again. <laughs> does she be. have uh, does Janine have does she have a website or a link or something? I don't see any links. So I want to get her some publicity. Yeah, for sure. I do. Um, Instagram. Uh, which which page are you asking for here? Whatever you got, whatever you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, how- we got a winner. <laughs> Mad Sloper. Um, Mad Sloper. Congratulations, Mad wow. Sloper. Yeah, do you you have a website that people can um, sign up, give you money, and jump in the balloon with you? Wow, no, I don't have a website, but I do. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Facebook is my name, my full name. Instagram is Airgasm. I'll share the uh, screen. I'll share your Instagram, uh, just you. some some of your pictures right here too, just real quick. Right, She's got some really that? neat pictures from um, South Africa. I have some friends in Cape Town, by the way. I'm probably oh. going to go there at some point. Um, um, actually, funny enough, you know, my I am not a grammar, so I've been on Instagram not very long. But my Facebook page is where it all happens. But now being in America, I need to be more active on Graham. So, but if you want to see more ballooning pictures and all of that, Facebook and it's Janine Fraser. Okay, perfect. Uh, if you guys can dig up that link, that'd be amazing. And drop that in the, uh, in the chat so people can follow her. Uh, Hot Buttered Steve Productions donated $10 to the Super Chat. He said, Robert, I got attacked last night, but he had some class. He used an electric razor. Kind of my fault. I was standing next to an outlet. He took my wallet, my keys, and took a little off the side. Now, Hot Buttered Steve has some of the best comments. It's it's kind of... uh, uh, (laughs) He doesn't have a clue about what you and I talked about. so this is crazy. So I, I invited uh, Janine to come on the show um, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I just reached out to her through a, a comment on Instagram. She responded right away. And uh, then she uh, kind of went off the radar. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I hope she didn't get scared away or, or I don't know, you know, whatever. And then she came back and she said, on my birthday, I got mugged. And I'm like, no way. So I, I have to know what... Uh, can I, I mean can you are you okay to share the story what happened yeah no i'm fine i'm just not flying um unfortunately um yeah birthday awesome birthday spent a week in las vegas a good friend of mine organized timeshare there for us spent a week and on my birthday went to fremont street and got the fremont street experience you know and I don't know. I don't even know what happened because the cops had to look, relook at the CCTV camera and actually tell me what happened. But I had a little backpack on and it's actually my ballooning backpack. It's got balloons all over it and it's my favorite one. And I had my passport and money in it. And this girl apparently tried to rip me down and she did. She pulled me down so hard. Unfortunately, she was not from this planet because she was high and um yeah she managed to I managed to because there were so many people I walked with my backpack in front and not on the back and uh, when she did try and pull it from me I went down and I rolled into the like a fetal position and she managed to punch me and hit me and all the blows to my head and my stomach and my back but I survived but the biggest thing is my ego right now. You know, I got beat up hmm. by a girl. <laughs> I was just going to say, you don't want to mess with a South African girl. And, <laughs> and I'm a tough girl. You know, my dad yeah. said to me, I'm sorry to hear that, but did you at least get in one punch? I'm like, no, dad. I was rolled up in a ball. I didn't do anything. I said, I want to go back. The police like, do you want to press charges? I'm like, of course I do. But it's more of a hassle because you have to keep on going back and all that. So I'm like, Anyway, 
it's you know two yeah. wrongs don't make a right but yeah. i'm just grateful that i've still got my teeth and it's just a few bruises and a little bit of the eardrum but it's all good i haven't been flying for a while because of the swelling on the back of my head but i'm i was worried about that but it's all good you know i've i've got my bag i've got my Passport. face my teeth everything i'm just yeah. just a little bit uh Sorry, I got beat up by a girl. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna go for lessons now. I'm yeah. gonna get that <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, lessons, girlfriend. A lot of times lessons. girl fights are a lot worse than guy fights. I right? know I mean, they are brutal. But... Uh, they'll gouge eyes, they'll do all kinds of oh. stuff. Cool hair. I mean, you know, oh, guys yes. just oh, let's duke it out. But no, girls. Don't... Oh no, she yeah. was she was jumping up and down like Holly Holmes. She was ready oh, to gosh. fight. I'm like, whoa. That's the Sorry, that's the type of that. girl you want to fight with. You don't want to fight with the girl that pulls hair and scratches. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's talk a little bit about weather predicting. What do you do? What what where are you looking? I'm sure, and this has been something I, from day one. I saw yeah. balloonists and I thought, I want to know what weather they're looking at. It's exactly the same weather as everybody uses. I use many different things. I use uh, I'm taking the national- notes. Okay, it's, I'm sure you use the same thing. Okay. But the National Weather Service is a good mm-hmm. one. And you just put in your um, your location, mm-hmm. which is a, a, a good one. You know, you type in Temecula and it brings up a forecast and all of that. Um, and that gives you a general thing and a lot of things to, to look at on that site. The main one is Windy. Windy helps oh, yeah. big time. I'm yeah, very, very grateful for that site. Yeah. Um, By the way, he's a, the owner is a huge paragliding fanatic. He loves oh, paragliding. Wow. Yeah. So that's why he made well, the site. He's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful to, to have him in our lives because he has made one of the best apps for flying and yeah. anybody flying any type of pilot and windy is the most accurate when we are on the ground and about to take off i will even look at windy before i land because i'm like whoa the wind is picking up and i might get onto windy quickly that's my like last to go and i'm like whoa it's actually picking up now i better land it's it's a windy is a very very good app another one i use is the um wind forecast Um, say that again Balloonist, it's Ryan Colton. RyanColton.com. Yeah. And that's really? also another good one. Gringo, you've heard of this? Yeah, Ryan. Ryan I use it. Carlton. Yes. That's that's really it, good. It's Ryan one. Colton, but the app is Balloonist Weather Forecast or Balloonist yes. Forecast. Yeah. Yes. They have an app that, yeah, I use that as well. Same, and, same with Noah. Yes, that's another one. No is another good one. But the thing with Ryan Colton is um, it gives you the winds aloft. So does mm. Wendy. Um, Ryan Colton um, is normally a little bit over exaggerated. You know, it makes me a little bit nervous in the morning when I check it. I'm like, whoa, it's a bit windy. But when we do go out there, you see, they are updating it more often, Ryan mm. Colton, than Wendy. I think Wendy does it every. I'm not too sure, but yeah, yeah. That that's another like one the, I use. That sounds like the 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 uh, default model in Wendy can scare you quite a bit, and then you go to all the other ones. GFS. Yes. Model so it's you, always you, good to use a few, you know, yeah, and make your absolutely. own decision at the end of the day. Um, another one is um, um, I use the AVA Weather, which is. Um, it's called Avia Weather, A V I A. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I have heard I of that. Spell. Avia, Avia Weather. Yeah. And that's like the morning before is what I like, like right on the morning. Yeah. I click on my stations, all the airports that I check, and I'm like, and I just see if there's mist or fog or something. It gives me the temperature dew point straight away, and I can check if we're going to have an overcast day. So I like that too. Um, but I, it's I like all about checking that. weather every day. I, I'll, I'll check weather throughout the day. And then still before I go to bed and when I wake up, I'll check the weather again. And it is never right. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So I want to be a weatherman because it's the yes. only job in the world where you can be wrong every day yeah. and still get paid and your boss is like, good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I've crossed over a, a, a little boundary in uh, meteorology and, and dangerously close to a weatherman because of how uh, intense you have to look if you're going to yes. fly cross country with a paraglider. Um, you, you have to, so I'm, I'm screen sharing right now. Everyone can see this is uh, XC skies. This is one we use global forecast. Uh, you have icon. I usually look closely just before I fly at the high res. Oh, this wow. is a uh, very close up of what's happening with wind speed. This also has winds aloft. This is going to show me my, uh, winds at altitude, all that I can click in a section. Now this is a, I pay for this app. So, uh, 40 bucks a year, but it has a really nice, um, different features that um, give you a, a um, wind direction at altitude, your, oh, yeah. where your temperature meets dew point, if you're going to meet clouds, things like that. So um, that's XC Skies. I'll, I'll share you a link to that. You can look oh, thank at you. Uh, It's a really nice um, made by Free Flight guys. Oh, Free Flight. That's another good one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a... Um, uh, AV, AVI weather, and you were gonna, you were about to say another one, I think, and I disrupted you. Um, I think it was just AVI weather, and then I was just checking, looking through my my other stuff. And uh, Noah, the um, yep, Sean did mention that, that. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a uh, wind alert? Wind alert? No, I yeah, have not. Check. This is a great one when you're in the air. This is, I'll pull this out sometimes when I get scared. Oh wow. Uh, looks uh -huh. like this right here. It's a the red. Oh, okay. Um, I will definitely look for that one. Yeah, it's funny because the the cover is a, a water spout. But yeah, this this will have all your oh, very live nice. your uh, live stream. So similar to windy, but yeah, I okay. I think wind alert may be using the same uh, information. So, so it's probably the same as windy and we just feel like it's more uh the time sensitive it's pulling numbers uh almost real time okay i think windy might be every like five minutes or something like that um but yeah so uh that's so awesome uh, i got some more resources that was something else that i was really fascinated with is uh because you guys have so much reliance on the wind so let's talk a little, a little bit about this. And I, I know I know we've got some questions. I'm I'm really trying. I'm going to get to your questions in the chat. Um, can you actually? You can. I know there's a sale. Like you talked about the canopy, the the wind direction. You can use it like a. Uh, it's going to pull you with the wind. But can you? Isn't there flaps or something that you can open and allow some of the hot air to escape to kind of propel you in a direction? All we have is turning vents. So all I have control of is two little ropes. Hi, mm -hmm. two little ropes. Yeah. <laughs> and awesome. uh, they can go left or right. Okay. So, and that just enables me to turn my scoop or my skirt in the direction of wind. The bigger balloons have it, the smaller balloons don't. And when I was learning how to fly, I'm like, Oh, I can't do all of that and fly at the same time. And now it's like when I fly balloons that don't have the turning vents, I'm like, I feel naked. I'm like, oh, I have to turn. You know, it's just weird. Yeah. It just, you can feel yourself sailing in the wind if you don't. So have when you see, what what is it? Uh, is it a like pockets on the side of the canopy? What, yes, what it's is just it? open little vents. That's uh, like an overlap of material. Okay. And uh, you 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 pull the line and it will open a little bit to turn you. It's just ah, got it. So it is releasing some some of that hot air. It is out. releasing because okay. I do sometimes use it on a calm day. You know to slowly get down and in position. You'll just hold onto that line a little bit, let some air out, and then. It will cool the balloon down to let it come down a little bit faster. But you you mainly just use it. That's the only control I have as a pilot in a hot air balloon is those two little, little strings that make me turn direction. That's all I can do. So if the, if I see like a bobcat or a or a or a coyote, I'm like, oh look there. And the client's like, I can't see. So I'm like quickly, yeah. you know, turn the yeah. balloon, spin it around slowly. 
there's your bobcat, but the bobcat's already, you yeah, know, got yeah. it. it doesn't turn that far. So, yeah. but that's all I can do. And that's why we are allowed to land wherever we, we decide is a safe landing because we are propelled by the wind. You know, yeah. when we are running out of fuel or whatever, we make decisions and we do land in somebody's backyard and they're not happy with that. So some people are and some people aren't. You know, sometimes they're running after me with champagne and orange juice and other days they're running with guns. So... You know, you never know. No, I'm joking. But <laughs> they That's normally how we love feel. us. They love us. They normally yeah. love us. But yeah. um, we only have a problem. We fly over the marijuana fields. It's, you know, the oh. guys. Yes. Us I know where that's at. I know where yes. it's at. There's yeah. a blue like, out there. Get legal and all will be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I almost felt like I was having engine trouble and had to land out. But Oh, yeah. no, don't. No. Because they... <laughs> They don't like anybody flying over. Oh, and oh um, that was very interesting, flying over the marijuana fields. We don't do it anymore because it's it's just, we don't and want any stinky. issues. <laughs> oh, no, it's not stinky. <laughs> you, you can't even smell it. It's just no, the people yeah. are not very friendly. Yeah, it's like the it's dang like the cartel. Hassle. You know, it's like the hassle. You know, well, you could do hassle, 30 yeah. miles Stay an hour. You could do yeah. 30 miles an hour of the speed limit but you could get a ticket you yes. know you, you you could cross the road without going over the the walkway but okay, you could get a ticket it's time for the nitty-gritty <laughs> questions all right oh. take take us through a time when you were out of control or you had some event that really sticks out in your mind and what did you learn from that oh She's searching. She's got a lot of them. I can tell. No, I don't. I want the actually. best one. I, 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 I don't. I have more stories about being a game ranger than flying right now. Um, you know. Um, you choose your weather. When well. I was learning how to fly, there was a lot of incidents. I actually one of the incidents was I think I made a gay man straight. Is yeah. because we. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well done. So basically, he was one of my instructors, and uh, he was an awesome guy. Um, very happy, you know, loved him. Uh, smelled good, and um, yeah, uh, well manicured, I remember. And um, we were flying the one day, and I was coming in. I think I was like, I didn't even have my private pilot then. I was still a student. And here we are coming into land, and, you know, we before you pull that final red line and you make that decision, we were coming in pretty fast, you know, and you're just basically gliding over the the terrain. And we were out in the desert. Um, there's a few roads out in the desert. And we now this desert is not a sand. It's full of cactuses and oh. all sorts of things. So and pinion trees. Pinion trees are good. They're just a little bit hard, but they softish for land. They've got no thorns, which is a good thing. So here we are coming to landing and he says, this is going to be a fast one. I'm like, yeah, it is. So we're coming and coming in and he says, you, you know, use the road because the road had a little bit of an embankment on it. So he said, use that, you know, let's, let's slow down a little bit. You, we were using the brush to slow down. So the basket is touching the brush, slowing us down. And then we're coming to the road, the embankment, which was a pile of dirt. So he wanted me to hit that slow us down and then land so we're coming in coming in coming in and we hit that embankment so hard he wasn't even holding on and i'm like you know at least hold on anyway he landed so, uh, he was in front of me uh -oh. and i was at the back and we landed in such a funny position the crew found us oh, <laughs> he no. was between my legs and my legs were around <laughs> him the crew finally <laughs> came because it was like the you know the balloon was all over the mm. place and we had a hard landing there was dust everywhere. We couldn't see anything. The crew were there. And we, they're like, what are you guys doing? We're like, what do you think we're doing? We, they had to pull us out. It was the funniest thing. And I'm like, I looked at the guy. I'm like, are you straight now? <laughs> <laughs> the conversion balloon therapy. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> I got I to gotta point out, you know, the, the way that she had said that, he was a good man, was you know, was. I, I was getting I, I was getting myself prepared like 
That is so awesome. <laughs> and in that desert, uh, so talk a little bit about the fabric. I, one of the guys, uh, I, I can't remember if it was uh, Gerald or Gluteus, uh, but one of them had asked about the fabric. Uh, do you, is, is it a, um, is it the similar material as what we're flying when we fly our uh, tablecloths? Exactly or... the same, exactly the same yeah. material. Um, well, um, for most of the balloon, you know, we, we have different material to the balloon. The lower part of the envelope is what we call it, is more of a heat resistant um, oh, material. Sure. That makes sense. Um, I don't. It's it's the Nomex. Sorry, it's called the it's called the no it's Nomex material, and that's more of a, a heat resistant. And we have that on the scoop, and we have that maybe two or three panels up of the scoop because that's the hottest part of the balloon. And when we're heating it up, that's the main part that takes most of the heat. And then we have. Um, um, for, like right at the top of the balloon, we call it hyperlast. That's also what well, is not a. It's actually very flammable, oh. but it's 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 a very good um, thing to use. The hyperlast. It's a very heavy material, but the balloon is flammable. You know, it's, it, wow. it does burn. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the commercial companies it's up to the pilots to look after the balloons because if you have too much dust and grass and junk in the envelope while you're heating it up and little stones those stones heat up and when you do finally stand the balloon up it will burn holes in the balloon you wow. know and that's it's, it's it's just something to be wary of and but so the material lasts it's those those balloon envelopes can go thousands of hours you know when you're filling up the balloon on the ground with cold air, at what point do you switch to hot air? And do you just keep the fan running the whole time so that it's not? You do. You keep that fan running. It's the beginning. And the minute it's a little bit like looking like a balloon, I start pumping it with a little bit of heat. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Being in a commercial operation, it's all about, as my boss says, Hollywood. You know, we take pictures and we do all sorts of things to give the clients or the passengers the best experience. It all starts on the ground. And um, so I use those shots, the, 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 the heat, slowly but surely I puff it up with, with my burners while they're taking pictures of the clients with the fire. And um, it's a process. You, that fan stays on until I tell them to cut it out. And then she's already lifting. The balloon's already standing up. Okay, that makes sense. When I tell them to, to, to cut it off, yes. How many guys do you have on your ground crew? It's three, three to four. Some days it's one. I have pulled off a 16-passenger balloon. With one helper? With one guy, yes. Oh, my god! And landed in the road, and he helped me. No it's kidding. It's hard work. Do you uh, use passengers if you have to put them to work? No, some no. companies do, but my company doesn't. Um, okay. Basically, we serve champagne in the air, and when they land, they are whipped off in the party bus and taken back to their car. Oh. Other companies will um, land and then do the whole, um, you know, toast and all that, and then um, take them back, but every company is different um i have to mention a couple sponsors one of those is maxacro.com if you want to get some paragliding uh, free flight training um you can also get you, you can do an siv training course with him uh he does training here in southern california at torrey pines glider port but um also he's around the world uh, they have a couple of um siv training courses that are going to be happening in turkey so if you want to sign up with him maxacro.com is the website also want to mention lone star paramotor uh if you're in the lone star state of texas you can reach out to ron Turan and his team for world-class training lone star paramotor.com is the website also want to mention resurgence ppg if you're interested in supporting our men and women of uniform uh, you can make a tax deductible donation to those that have put their lives on the line for your freedom. You can reach out to Todd Scandrant at resurgenceppg.com. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat I wanted to get to. Uh, one of those is, uh, uh, what is the 
uh, the the strongest wind that you will launch in? Uh, strongest wind with those balloons, it all depends on the location you are flying in. Okay. Because you can take off in any strong wind. I know um, back home they're taking off in 15, 20 knot winds. But what? they have... They have the, the ability of, um, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they do take off in very high winds um, because they have such an open area. You okay. know, here in Temecula, I think the, the strongest wind we've taken off in is maybe four or five. It's picked up to maybe six where um, it's okay. You know, once you're up in the wow. air, it's fine. Yeah. But it's the landing that's the problem. It all depends on... The area with these balloons where I fly, we do not land faster than 10. 10 is pushing it because we need a little bit of a runway is what we call it, like a drag area. So those big balloons need a bit of space. And in Temecula, we don't have space. We have vineyards. We have orchids, yeah. uh, orchards. We, we, we have, we normally landing with a rope and the crew are pulling us into an open area because Normally the wind either dies or oh. it, when it's too windy, we just make sure that we get to an open area and land. And you've got to be close enough to a road that you can drive in there to get that basket. We always out of have there. to make, yes, we yeah. always have to make sure that the crew can access the location that we land in. Yeah, same so thing happens in motor. Yes, yeah, sometimes I've landed in a place. And the guy starts screaming at me. I'm like, oh, oh. And, you know, you just like heat up the balloon. It's like, I'm sorry, sir. And you just like wave goodbye. <laughs> and the crew sort of help us and drag us to a road or something. So oh, that's, that's why with ballooning, it's a teamwork. Your crew are as important as your pilot. My word. Um, let me ask this question. Um, flying over congested areas, you, you probably don't do that. We do. There is a limitation. We have to be, I think, 1,500 above above that. Oh, interesting. But in a balloon, unfortunately, we do fly low over the houses all the time when we're coming into landing. Yeah. You know, when I'm coming into landing, the wind, Mother Nature, she changes all the time as we're coming down. And I, unfortunately, have to just bob over the houses to land in a in a little bit of an open area but we are always considerate you know in 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 when you're learning to become a pilot it's all about landowners respecting landowners and yeah. respecting animals we have different burners that we use for animals we call them whispers oh, it's wow. a little bit of a lighter noise for the horses, especially here in Temecula, we have million dollar horses out here, you know, right? horses and, and all sorts of things that we have to be careful of. So we do think of that. And I know I do it. If I do see a big ranch and all these expensive horses, I will just fly on because I don't want those horses to injure themselves and the owner to come to me and say, hey, you injured my horse. I'd rather just be safe, you know, everyone happy and just fly on and land somewhere else. Ooh, wow. And that Amazing. was an experience too, watching horses run towards your, like the balloon that you're in. Like they'll run. Sometimes they they'll, like they'll us, yes. What, yeah. The cows love chewing on the wicker baskets. I don't know what oh. it is, but cows love it. Oh, so when scary. we land and we see cows, it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> they see a snack. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the uh, that's one hour. We're gonna go to the after show. Uh, really appreciate, um, man, such a great show. It that's how you know it's a good show because it just burned up uh, one yeah. hour like awesome. nothing. Thank you. You have to come uh, on again. There's way too many. Questions. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm, I still I'm, have. I'm, yeah. <laughs> there's like 20 uh, questions still in the chat. I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to them all. It's 7.02 already. But please, you know, you've got my Instagram. You've got my Facebook. Yeah. Any questions, drop me. I'll uh, feel free to answer. You know, I'm happy, so happy awesome. to help. And I'd love to also join your sport, which I will do very soon. We'll help you. So out. I'm. Yeah, we're here to help. Also, I would love to come and maybe set up while you guys, I'll bring my paramotor and my my stuff. Yes. I'll come set up. I can actually, for a, for a small ride in your balloon, I can actually use my fan to fill up your balloon. Wow. Cold air only. <laughs> Good. I move approximately 10,000 CFM. Wow. 
10,000 CFM. So at full throttle, we can fill up your balloon in approximately three minutes. No, that I don't know. I'm just, joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but I know they do it. They do do that. So thank you wow. so much. I'm going to, I'm going to always need gonna... backup. So that's good. Okay, good. I, I'll get, uh, we're going to go to the after show. If you want to join the after show, I'm going to put uh, the link in the, uh, in the uh, chat. And so you guys are welcome to join the after show. Come and hang out with us for a little bit. I'm not going to hold her hostage. She has to go. She has to go, but she, uh, I'm good. I've, go. I've got nowhere to go. My friend okay. just arrived home. It's all good now. <laughs> okay. Thank you so Bye, much. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to check out some of the other episodes of the show, paraglidingtalk.com is the website. Uh, support the show if you can. Uh, I'd love to see new faces and, and new people getting uh, learning stuff uh, on a show on the uh, on the internet. It's always great fun. So thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Gringo, thanks for moderating. Sean Nafsker, all the moderators, anybody that you see in the chat with a tool next to their name, they all work for the show. They're all great uh, uh, con uh, contributors to the show. Thank you guys for what you do, and especially uh, everybody who's logged on tonight to watch paraglidingtalk.com. Have a